Hello, and welcome back to Waged Wars. Be sure to yet again check out my website at wagedwars.com. Alright, listen up. Today's episode isn't going to be a full Waged Wars adventure, because this is just something cool I found and I wanted to share with the community real quick. So now, without further ado, let's get into this. Today we're going to learn about something I found that I thought was pretty neat, and that is the female pilots of World War II. It's a really cool unexplored concept with pilots like Mary Ellis who flew for the British side and actually just passed away in July of 2018. Like I said, pretty neat. But today, I wanted to discuss the other side of the war and talk about a woman pilot on the Nazi side and her stories. So here we have a pretty impressive one, Hanna Heitch. She was the first woman to... Let's see. First woman to fly a helicopter, first woman to pilot a rocket plane, first woman to pilot a jet. She earned the first class Luftwaffe Iron Cross, and of course, she was member number one of the Whirly Girls Female Helicopter Association. Not to mention, she got to meet this guy with the mustache. I can't exactly remember what he did, but I bet it was pretty important. Hannah Reich was born in 1912 under the German Empire in the city of Hersburg, which is in modern-day Poland, oddly enough. She started flying in 1932 at age 20, and by 1937, she had attracted the attention of the Luftwaffe, and she was enlisted. I definitely have no doubts about her ability as a skilled pilot, but it seems she was maybe selected partially for the propaganda power a successful female pilot could bring. Kind of like the whole propaganda campaign the Soviets ran with Lyudmila Pavlichenko, which is another topic I reported on. Anyways, back to Hannah's story. After a few years of proving herself as a worthy pilot, she was chosen to test fly the Junkers Ju-88 Stuka, which for those who don't know, is this terrifying thing. She was also one of the initial test flyers of the Messerschmitt 163 Comet, which is this cute little thing. On one of the test flights, she had a rough crash landing, and she spent five months recovering in hospital. By the time she had healed up, the end days were upon Berlin. She was commanded by Hitler himself to take her and her boyfriend at the time and fly out of Germany. They didn't make it far, and were promptly captured and imprisoned by Americans. Whilst in prison, her family was running away from the ever-advancing Soviet onslaught, and they eventually came to settle in the city of Salzburg. By this time, the war was over, and when Hannah's father received the news that they were to be relocated into a Soviet-occupied zone, he saved that terror from him and his family. On the night of May 3rd, 1945, he killed his wife, Hannah's mother, Hannah's sister, and the sister's three children, before turning the gun on himself. Now, despite the obvious tragedy here, an interesting point can be brought up. Rather than return to the Soviet-occupied zones of East Germany, Hannah's father would rather kill himself and his family to save them that horrible fate. This shows that the same oppression and fear that we've seen in recent invasions of places like Ukraine, Georgia, and Central Africa by Russia is the exact same as what was happening almost 80 years ago. And the fear of falling into Russian hands was too much for Hannah's father, and he took his life and the lives of five of his family members to prevent what could come under Russian occupation. When the news reached Hannah and her boyfriend, now imprisoned by American officials, the grief was too much. Her boyfriend took his own life only a few weeks later. Besides the tragedy that faced her in the final months of the war, she continued on to beat records and compete in championship until her eventual death in 1979. In conclusion, the story is obviously an intriguing one, in addition to the fact that she was a female. The story also shows how dedicated a person can become to a thought or idea, and how others can be completely in fear of it. Something stuck with me in my research, and it's something Hannah said after her capture while being interviewed by allies. She said, we should all kneel down in reverence and prayer before the altar of the fatherland. When asked what the altar was, she said, the Führer's bunker in Berlin, of course. Even after seeing from the outside perspective how brutal Hitler was to those he occupied and the death and suffering he caused to the world at large, she couldn't see past the propagandas and lies that had shaped her world and her beliefs. Also, light needs to be shed on the oppressive regime the Russians created as they ravaged their way across Europe in the final days of the war. The atmosphere of fear and paranoia that they shed on the world stage isn't only a thing of the past. This is echoed in recent events, like the invasion of the Donbass region of Ukraine, and the unprovoked attacks in the Sea of Azov that took place only a few months ago.
Восемь двадцать один. For me, it just goes to show that regimes like Nazi Germany and the Russia of then and the Russia of today are just as willing to raise people up in their own image as they are to tear everything else down around them. Thanks to you all for watching.